the parents with them also. I know as a parent, sometimes we want some time off, but uh, I understand the schedules. Uh, on Saturday, my kids are going through the same thing. You, know, you wake up, you have practice, softball, basketball, baseball, whatever it may be, lacrosse. Uh, go get some lunch, come back, enjoy the game. After the game, get a good dinner, put the kids to bed, they should be exhausted. I think that's what all parents have as a goal, uh, myself included. And uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Questions, Dan? Coach, you talked about the running game a little bit with Mason that, but they also have Lawrence Williams and Coker transferring in. With their depth at running back, how are you going to combat that this weekend? Well, I think it's going to be very important, like I said before, a key is tackle. You know, we have to tackle well. Uh, you know, when those players get the ball in the perimeter, they have the speed to take it to the house. Their offensive line is actually bigger than our offensive line, so you can kind of get uh, a picture in your mind of, of how big and how physical they are up front, averaging over 400 some yards a game uh, running the football. So you know, it's going to be very physical up front. Our players are going to have to play well, and we're going to have to tackle well. I think that uh, you know, with those three backs, they have the opportunity you know, to wear you down, uh, to get the extra yardage, the hidden yardage that you might not see, and but yet they're still explosive when they get the ball on the perimeter. Mark? Coach, you might want to fix your column. Just for a foot and all the other ones. There you go. Appreciate it. Uh, and can we that's you suing things? my wife now. That, that's, <laughs> no, I'm not big on wardrobe. I know you see it later. You'll be like, why didn't anybody tell me? Um, we talked about this a little bit, but uh, you know, when you come off a game like USC, uh, natural tendency, most people would think, is to let down. How, how have you approached that with the kids this week and how have they responded to it? Well, I, I think, you know, you know for us, um, We haven't won a game. So when people say, you know, how do you keep this team going? You know, how do you how do you keep them, you know, focused on, you know, practice and, and not have a letdown? I think it's very hard that, uh, you know, the point maybe I don't understand is how do you have a letdown if you haven't won a game? And that's where we are. So we're 0-2. So, uh, you know, my focus with the team goes back to the same thing. You know, we have to earn, you know, what we do during the week. We have to earn the right to win. So when you talk about, and the big thing with our players this year is you deserve what you earn. So, you know, during the week we've been working hard to earn the right or to deserve to win. And that's what we've been doing with our team and that's how we've been keeping them uh, focused. But again, at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to sit, stand here and say, we haven't won a game. I mean, so how do you have a letdown if you haven't won a game? What's the one thing you most like to see from your team on Saturday is that, you know, put four quarters together, keeping the effort level up. I think you just answered. You know, I, I want to see that effort level, okay, go on. I want to see us increase the amount of mistakes. I want to see us execute the four quarters in all phases. So that's what we're looking for. Michael. Good answer. Good question. Good answer. <laughs> Doug, last night Jay Brown just said he felt that tomorrow's or Saturday's game is all on the defensive line, not the linebackers in the secondary. I'm giving his teammates the defensive line. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. That's probably a lot of players' mentality, no matter what game they're in. Everyone has individual pride, obviously, in themselves first, and then in their unit, meeting, you know, D-line, linebackers, or secondary. I think if you ask that question to anyone on our team, they probably answer you the same way. So uh, the answer to that question is we love that in our players. We appreciate that of our players, and that's what we like their mindset to be. But to say that's going to be the key to the game, there's a lot more to being, you know, the keys to the game than just uh, – one player or one position, but that's what that's the type of attitude we'd like. Other questions, Mark? Coach, have you have you done anything uh, to you know to, to encourage the team to get it going in the first half this week? Have you done anything differently? To I think I think it's, it's it's one of the things that we've talked about quite a bit, you know, um, as amongst the coaches, because I think it becomes more schematics. You know, how we get them off to a good start. What are they comfortable with? What do we feel good about? So I think from a schematic standpoint, that's the stuff that we've looked at to get our players to get off to a good start. Uh, you know, we've, we've missed some things early on, all phases of what we do, run, pass, blocking, and we just want to make sure that we can get off to that good start because it seems like as, as the game goes and we get into a rhythm, you know, we've been very successful. So the key question is how do we get into that rhythm uh, right from the beginning? Doug, I know last week, Well, I don't, I don't think I would, I, would, I would go, you know, and if I use the word more plays than I would have liked, then, then shame on me. But uh, going into the game, we were 
we're thinking 15 to 20 plays in the slot, uh, keeping them not, you know, keeping them from going vertical, you know, and not uh, exposing a lower body injury. At the end of the day, you know, he went out there and was playing extremely well. You know, he played 63 plays. So um, obviously, we're excited about that. Uh, now we're talking about a player that has been very successful for us, has played a lot of football for us, but didn't practice all week. So he didn't practice all week and went out there and played. So I'm really excited to see how Alec does, you know, with a full week of practice now and playing. And obviously, having played 63 plays, um, anything that I might have been uh, restraining on as far as restraining him from doing is out of my mind right now. Yeah. Coach, looking at Ashton Broyled and that he's had the opportunity to, you know, get in a little bit in these first two games and putting him in the Wildcat formation in the last game. How are you seeing him come along? Because Coach Wheatley had made the statement that you don't want to rush him too quick. Well, you know, we, we make statements as coaches that we don't want to rush, which is a true statement. And, you know, from the player standpoint, as fast as they develop, the more we can do. So it's kind of a two-way street. So we're looking for Ashton, you know, the more that, that we feel comfortable with during the week of what he can do, then the more we want to get him the ball. You know, and I've talked to Ashton myself and I told him that. I said, you know, it's not like we don't want to do things with you. It's not like we don't want to get you the ball. But hey, as your skill comes up and as you show us during the week that you can do it, then we'll give you those opportunities because, you know, obviously he's big, he's strong, he's fast, and he's a very talented player. So we're just we're just making sure that we keep this development going. John? Uh, last night Ryan said that uh, it takes a while for him to feel out the other team doing the up tough up tough for offense. Is that part of why you guys are starting slowly? Yeah, I don't know. You know, when you know now, you know this is a, the third comment I've gotten from you know this group about what players have said. You know, uh, I have not had that conversation with him, so it'd be very difficult for me uh, to comment on his comment. Uh, so for me, you know, I look at it from what can I what can I do a better job of as the head coach? And my conversation with Coach Ackett is, you know, what can he do a better job as the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach? And to all the coaches, you know, really, how can we do a better job and get us off to uh, a better start early on in the game, and that's what we've been discussing all week. Doug, when you, when you, after the game last week, you said that a lot of times your quarterbacks get slighted because of what we see in the past, and you know, when you have touchdowns, you get beat. You went back and looked at the same. What did you think of the secondary against the rest of the year? What some positives this week? Well, you know, I, I think you get the same thing. I mean, if I stand up here today and say, hey, they did an outstanding job, someone's going to say, well, they threw six touchdowns, okay? And I think it's a very difficult, you know, for me to give you type of answer that you may be looking for or may not be looking for. Uh, but we want a lot of snaps. And at the end of the day, schematically, you know, were we out of position? You know, did we have an opportunity to make a play on the ball? Now, was it just a matter of we didn't make the play? Uh, so to answer your question, we won, okay, our share of matchups, and we were in position. And at, 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 one, at some points in time, obviously, during that game, um, they made plays. And, you know, you sit here and, and, and you say to yourself, um, you, know, you know, we sit here as coaches and the players saying, gosh, you know, we can make that play. We can't. You know, our players can't make that play. But, you know, at, at one, some point, you're going to have to turn around and give credit. You know, you're talking about, you know, a combination of people that are probably the number one ranked combination of quarterback receiver uh, in the country. Uh, you have two basically first-round draft picks at wide receiver, and you have a high trophy like uh, quarterback. So uh, I was proud that defensively early on, what people didn't see was, and Matt Barkley mentioned this in his conference, that we played a lot more 3 d and forced him to, to hit the ball short. And again, that's probably why he's up for the height. You know, a lot of quarterbacks sometimes get frustrated, try to force balls. That's what we were trying to do early on in the game, trying to force him you know, to go to those guys deep, and he did it. Credit to him. Okay, credit to our players taking that away, coming up and tackling the ball. Time for a final question. Coach, when you play an FCS team, you know, some people say you don't have much to, to gain there. It's you know, if you win, you're supposed to, and if you lose, it's wow. So, what do you what do you get out of game against an FCS team? And is it more than it used to be? Is it more competitive? I feel the same way now that I did playing USC. In other words, you know, where are we at? Where are we going? What's going on? I think a lot of times when you get these questions, you get them from people that are more outside the program. And I'm not saying that's not a valid question. You know, for us, we're always trying to be a better team. Uh, we're always trying to win every game we play. We're trying to win each individual play all the time. So 
when it comes down to uh, USC, Stony Brook, Big East Conference schedule that we're playing, um, each team has strengths and weaknesses uh, that you try to uh, exploit. Each team, uh, each team that you're coaching has strengths and weaknesses that you want to uh, show and showcase and play to those strengths. Uh, so that's strategically how you look at it. I think that when you're more of a winning program, uh, in my experience, I think that's when sometimes you have to watch yourself. You know, uh, when I was at the Tennessees of the world, uh, when I was with the Saints that first year, you know, and then there comes an opponent that everybody's saying that you should beat, okay? Because you've already shown that you are this type of team, this type of culture, okay? Um, that's when I think you have to be leery or, or alert to what the team may be saying. But I think when you're a team that's aspiring to be uh, a great team, an elite team like the, like the one we've just played, I think it's, it's, it, those types of questions are very difficult to answer because they never come through, they never come through our minds as coaches. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, great. Coach. Thank you.